Hey guys, Grease Monkey 34 here, coming to an video about the Craftsman 6x4. I want to uh, do something with it, something uh, kind of good. So right now I got the rear, the rear end to look like this. Chained on both sides. The old mail adds 2 inch square tubing, 8 inch wall. So I unbolted the chain carrier. It's just like an uh, old boat gas tank. I uh, cut the top off, drill some holes for the water to drain. I'm gonna set that off to the side. This is what it looked like. I'm thinking somewhere like up in here, I'm gonna put some uh, brackets on the sides. And same with that side. And then uh, two brackets here, coming up, same here, like did the, some flat stock, because I want to make a, uh, a boom. I got the, the two inch square tubing, eight inch wall, the same stuff I made, uh, made the thing out of. So I'm thinking I'm going to take some of this, cut it at about six feet. And uh, take it from there all the way out to like here. So it's like a boom, like a wrecker. I drew out this little thing here quickly. This is the main uh, second axle. Second axle is right there. So I'm thinking from like somewhere about there, about six feet out. And then put a little carrier to hold the whole thing together. Like a V pattern, one from that way and one from that way. Come out to the center. About six feet and about five and a half feet tall. So I can tow out a trap is and a nice height. It won't be adjustable because I don't want that. And then up in this big area, it's not going to be used for anything. So I'm going to put the chain on the, well, wrap the chain on the side there. Oh, and I'm, I'm mentioning uh, this whole boom setup, you're going to be, you pull the four pins and the whole thing comes off. But in this area here, I'm going to put a piece of square tubing, a two and a half inch, so I can shove a piece of two inch in it, because I got my uh, 8,500 pound winch here. And I was thinking because it, I got it hooked up like, like this so far. If I cut it back here and drill in a hole, that could slide. That could slide into the hitch right here, so I can be a detachable winch on and off. We get 8,500 pounds. That's pretty strong for a tractor. But when you try, you got this thing in park, and then you're trying to tow another tractor out. If it's sunk in the mud, then you got the power. And I do got this come along, so I can use this to hook on the top of the the boom if I want to raise up and then down. So I get the uh, building this thing first. I'm gonna cut these uh, six foot pieces out of square square tubing, and then uh, work on some of those uh, brackets. Okay, guys. I got the square tubing all cleaned up. Took all like the piece it was off. We welded onto it, so I took any little bits off. So nice. I hung up on some rope. This is not the height it's gonna be. I wanted just a little bit more higher. Probably near a foot higher. Okay, right now it's about three and a three, three foot ten something like that. I wanted about five feet. So like look here. So, but yeah, that's the length of it. Six feet boom, a six foot boom. And down here, I wanna. Right now, you see if it's not it's not in line with the frame. Uh, not uh, cut it here, down the set down this side, like a like a pie shape. Get a small one and make it like a and bend it inward and make it straight with the frame. 
So when you weld those tab, when I weld the tabs in the quick release, like quick release pins, uh, everything will go nice and smoothly up and down, like straight. Because you can't have that angle. Because both of you touching. So, yeah. Next, I'm going to work on the tabs. I'm going to use some uh, plate steel and some half inch holes because I want half inch pins here. And uh, for the rails going from here to here, I want some half inch uh, pins as well. And I'll make those are square tubing as well, the support. Yeah, I think this will work good. And then I'm gonna throw the 85 pound winch somewhere in here, I think. We can squeeze in. Yeah, but yeah. I'm gonna start making those, and then, uh, oh, first I'm actually gonna cut these frame rails first and bend them in a little bit and we weld them. Let me get to doing that, and then I'll get back to you. Well, guys, I got it welded up. I cut a nice angle to it. And down here, it's 18 inch it cross, because that what my uh, rear end is on the craftsman. So the same. I'm going to just weld that little, uh, you only got like a one inch, no, not one inch, one degree angle on there. As you can see, it's just a little bit off. I'm gonna weld that up down there. But uh, up here, I like this. Nice little point to it. Same on this side. I'm gonna weld like a little bracket somewhere about here, and then a hook, so I can hook my uh, pulley up to it, so then run the cable over. But yeah, once the thing painted red, oh, everything gonna pop. Next, I'm gonna just uh, weld these seams up down here. Make sure it's all nice and strong, and then start uh, make some, like making some tabs. So I can get everything lined up, see where I want it. So I'll get back to you. Okay guys, got the angle all uh, hooked up. Got it fully welded on both sides. See the angle right here. Look pretty, uh, not so much of an angle, but just enough to make it uh, straight with the frame as you can see. Then you gotta come up here, and then the big A, I call it. Now, I'm gonna work on the plates. They're gonna be uh, flat steel plates from here to, to, to here. Yeah, there we go, you can see. From here to here. I'm gonna weld it right on this. So, and they're gonna drill a hole right through there. So, you pull the pin, and it comes off. Same with the back here. Once this attached up here, I'm going to work on the rear mounts. I'm going to see if I can make it adjustable, but I don't think I need it adjustable. I only want it this high, and that's all I want. I don't want it to go up and down no more. Um, this is the pulley. I'm going to make a mount to go about right there. About, uh, right there. So as you can see, yeah, you run the winch down, and it comes up over the pole and then down to anything, like a tractor, yeah. So, I'm going to cut some uh, plates out, I think I'm going to use some, half, some inch and a half, or two inch uh, flat stock, with half inch hole in it, so you can put the pin through. Okay, let's get started. Okay guys, I cut out eight plates and two inch it wide, four inch it long. I'm going to be drilling a hole right through uh, about an one inch mark away from this end. So I uh, welded them all together. I cramped them in the vise, welded them all together. Put a bead on both sides. Then I'll drill through the entire brick. First I'm gonna go to like from eighth inch to quarter inch to three eighths and then half inch. You wanna step it up every uh time, so four pass it. 
But yeah, did a little bit, did a little trick to uh, keep all these in in line, the same hole, the same uh, pattern, and everything. So yeah, I'm gonna go drill the hole, and I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, guys, the mounts are cut out. Don't worry about the, like these holes here. I'll fill them and weld after I welded them onto the frame. I took the tires off to make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna take these and put them about somewhere about like there and weld them fully. And the mounts will go up to the support mounts on a weld about here. And now I'll support up. Yeah, I'm gonna do that on both sides. I gotta clean it up a little bit. I take this paint off so I can weld. Yeah, this is how my chain design anyways. I got the tensioners, one on the top, one on the bottom, because when you're going reverse or going forward, you want the chain tension all the time. And these are size 50, chain and gears. So yeah, heavy duty. And one on both sides, so it's not like not getting traction or something. Okay, I'll clean that up and clamp these on and weld them on. Okay guys. I got them in I got them fully welded in there. I got the pins in, I made some pins. As you can see. Same on the back side. So yeah. All I did is drill a half inch hole through the pipe. Right through. Then I uh, went went to buy some bolts. I got some uh, half inch by five inch. Grade five. Don't have the grade eight or anything. All I did is snip the threads off and rounded the end, the head off. So it gave me a nice little pin and drill a uh, an eighth inch hole in it so I can just put a clip. So you pull that and you pull the other side and the whole boom come off. So that the height is going to be about five and a half feet off the ground to the tip. And about five feet to where the anchor is going to be. The hook for the pulley. So yeah, I think it looks pretty good, that angle. I grinded these down so I'm ready to put the plates on there. So uh, yeah, I'd build these little mounts now. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it stationary. I don't need it to, to swing uh, back and forth, to low and high, because I don't need it. So, I don't want it stationary, so what are they gonna be? I'm gonna cut the, uh, these little pieces up, and I'll be right back with you guys. Okay guys, I got these pieces cut. To match the same angle I want. Which is that. And why do you think the gap here? Because they don't, they don't line up perfect. As you can see. They're about two inches out on both sides, so they're lucky. Kind of handy because I got this piece. I'm just gonna slide that in here and weld that fall so like this. Because then I can uh, put my uh, anchors here as well. Just for like a double back system. If I don't want to use the, the, this down here, I can. Uh, I want to have a clevis here and a clevis on that side, and then yeah. Okay, coming along, I'm gonna put that together and tack it all in place. I'll weld it. And then uh, take these pieces here and uh, put them the same like I got on those. So, four pins, take out four pins, and the whole boom assembly come off. Plus the winch. Yeah, the winch. Okay. Well, guys, I got it attached. As you can see, and the place I wanted it. 
And these can just swing back and forth. I don't make them perfectly straight. And then uh, take this piece and weld it in like this. As you can see. I will make caps to fill the ends. And then uh, this whole boom assembly will let rest on there and I'll weld that too. I should make it nice and strong. So, yeah. I'll get to doing that and I'll get back to you. Okay, guys. I got it in there. I gotta weld it around. So on that side. I'm gonna weld it the back side. I'm not gonna weld underneath because I don't think it needs it. It only pushes it down. It only pushing down. So yeah, it's pretty uh, strong. I think I can put my whole body weight on there. Then start lifting up the back of the truck. Yeah, that's what it look like so far. And like I said, you pull the four pins, and the whole thing comes off. Easy. Now I'm going to uh, clean up those, make some caps for those ends, and put the pipe down here. Did not uh, enclose yet. Make it, make sure it's sealed all the way off. Uh, I'm gonna. There's some echo stuff I put on the winch before. I'm gonna take that off to cut it off. Just keep the uh, a little pipe sticking out in the rear. About this far. I'm gonna cut it off and put a drill hole there again. Because I don't need it that long. I had a two foot extension. So what I'm gonna put here is uh, I still got this piece of square tubing. That's a two inch by two inch still. And I welded about somewhere here. And then on top of this, uh, coming out this way, uh, a piece of uh, two and a half inch square tube. And so that two inch will slide inside it. And you just put a pin. It'd be that simple. So I can take that off anytime if I need it. Or I can take this whole boom off plus the winch keep on it at the same time. So I make it very easy and everything. So I'm going to do that now. Cut that piece, clean this up, make some caps, and I'll be back with you. Okay, guys, I got it clamped. As you can see, I got to, I made this two inch, two and a half inch uh, square tubing. As you can see, I cut two pieces of uh, C channel and I post, put, some, put them together. Now I drilled a 5 8 hole through the center. I'm going to put my. Uh, when I trim this down to about here, I'm going to drill another 5 8, five eight hole right here. And then it should whole thing slide right in there. Yeah, so I'm going to cut uh, this excess stuff I welded on before, like these pieces and this uh, railway track. And cut this down about six inch it, five and a half long, and we have a five inch hole. And I'll bolt, I'll put slide it on there, make sure it fits before I fully weld these. And I already uh, seen from this point to this point when you uh, when the whole a arm go up and down, these doesn't touch. So I got about an inch of clamps when this all the way against here. So, that'll be the position right there of that. So, yeah, next, I'm gonna cut that apart and slide it in there and see how this fits. Here we go, you guys. I took off all that crap it was on the winch I welded on a while back. I drilled a five inch hole, so I got a, a bolt suit so, so far right now. And yeah, it worked pretty damn good. The cable went through here. Oh, it's gonna be straight all the time, so not don't I don't have to worry about how wide this is. And yeah.
walk around, see how much clearance it got, see? So yeah, it looks pretty good, it's pretty it's nice and high. So if I go through tons of water or anything, that's not gonna ruin the winch. It is waterproof anyway, so yeah. Now I'm gonna make this mount about here. And as you can see, yeah, that can be nice and high for like, winching people out or t uh, pulling a uh, trap behind. So, I'm gonna t pull it back off, load that two inch, and yeah, make up a little mount to mount the hook. Nice and easy. So, I'll be right back. Well guys, I got uh, everything loaded up. I got all the ends on. So I think it looked pretty good. I found out what I'm uh, doing up here. I had to drill the half inch hole, put a pin, a clevis. Same on this side. I cap this, cap that, cap that, and I cap the ends. And I welded these uh, D rings on, so they have a hitch point equa. Yeah, and that it looked pretty good. Oh, and also I I uh, put a little quarter inch space in there, so just for more uh, strength. Because yeah, that winch does put out a lot of power, so I want to make sure I don't rip off or anything. Yeah, so I got that done. I sanded it quickly, so I'm gonna throw a coat of uh, primer on it and then uh, some nice uh, imprint red to match the rear back here. So yeah, I'm gonna hang this up and paint it and I'll get back to you when it all dry. Okay guys, I got it all painted. It back on. Tires are back on. Got the pins in holding it. I can see the D-rings on. I got the clevers up here. Got the winch going down to the hook down there, and then I got the winch here. Got the pin in holding the winch on. Nice and solid. And I got this battery for now. Cause I don't got the cables going up to the front. But what I think I'm doing is opening down here is uh, I'm gonna make a battery tray to hold a, uh, a normal like, truck battery. And to charge the truck battery, I'm gonna have two cables going up to the that ba uh, the tractor battery, so it can charge over time. Yeah, I think it turned out good. It looked good with red. I gotta get a pin for that, but it's just a bolt right now, so, but yeah. I'm gonna go, uh, go test it. One of my friends is bringing his quad, so I'm, he's gonna go get his quad stuck really bad, and I'm gonna try to pull him out with this. So I'm gonna go test this. Hey guys, here it is. I got, the, I got my quad hooked up. And I can't believe I actually told it. I forgot to take off these uh, 135 weights. So 160, 260 pounds on the rear of the quad, and it still told it. So it looked pretty good. Nothing broke. It does pick up the front end off the ground sometimes, even with the dual wheels on the back. But that, like, like I said, this quad is extra heavy, heavy duty. So, yeah. I'm gonna get, get, try to get my friend stuck and uh, tow him out. Now nah, it's back.
There we go. How heavy is this one? Yeah, so how you change the tire, I'll get it. Yeah. <laughs>